G'day everyone and welcome back to the channel. And as always, hope you're doing well. Now as a lot of you probably already know, I'm heading off on a big, big adventure on this bike very shortly. Going to Cairns, up to the tip of Cape York, all the way up to the tip top of Australia, before turning around and coming all the way back down here to home on the Gold Coast. It's gonna be somewhere around the 5,000 kilometer mark by the end of this trip. My beautiful DRZ here has never let me down after four years of ownership, touch wood, but there were a few things on this bike that I needed to go over and give a bit of love and attention to, to make sure she was all ready to go for for this big adventure. So basically I'm in the shed here today to give you guys a run through of what I've done to the bike to get it ready for this trip, any mods that I've added that are new for this trip, and then finally I'll give you an in-depth look at my luggage setup, uh, what I'm actually gonna carry the luggage in, and also what I've actually packed. Let's get straight into it guys, we'll check it all out. I do do my best to look after this bike uh, the best that I can. So she was in pretty good shape to start with, but there's obviously nothing wrong with a bit of preventative maintenance to make sure you do these things at home before you head away on a trip. So you're not doing any roadside repairs, trackside repairs, things like that. Now I did film some of the work when I was doing it, but I've had some dramas with the cameras and I've lost that footage. Uh, I don't have any of that anymore, but to start off with guys, the first thing I did was chuck it up on the stand and I stripped the bike bare. I took the wheels and tires off, took the tank off, all the plastic, the seat, just stripped it right back so I could get into all those hard to reach places and, and give her a good, good clean out and make sure I could access all those hard to reach areas. So to start with, obviously went and done all the basic stuff that you do on any servicing on any motorcycle really. Uh, new engine oil, new filters. I even cleaned the, the little secret filter that's on this bike up underneath. I just went and used Suzuki Genuine X-Star oil this time. I don't normally use this stuff, but I came in a kit with all the oil I needed as well as some new crush washers and uh, the seals around on the outside there. So it was just easier to order it all in a kit. I hadn't replaced the crush washers in a while. So that was just an easy option to get all that in one go. Uh, I also chucked in a new spark plug while the tank was off. Nothing wrong with the other one, but just chuck in a new one while I can. Keep that old one as a spare. I also went around and done a bit of a full nut and bolt check just to make sure everything was looking sweet and not coming loose. Uh, checked all the spokes as well and went around and hit all the grease points, all the grease nipples, just to grease everything up, get it ready. And after all that stuff that I did at the start, all your general stuff you normally do, was onto some things that you don't always have to do on every service. I figured they would need a doing on this bike before this big trip. First one I did was drain the coolant system and fill it up with some new stuff. So that's all ready to go there. I also went and replaced the wheel spaces on the rear and the front as well. This is the ones that were off it. As you can see here, that's one off the front. These are the rear ones. See there, got some wear marks around the outside. Nothing major, they probably got plenty of life left in them, but figured on such a big trip, why not just replace them? It's an easy thing to do, so just to be safe. Got new ones of them in the front and the rear. It was also the same story with things such as the wheel bearings, the chain, and the clutch cable. All those things were still in working order, but while the bike was apart and going on such a large trip, I figured why not spend the extra money and get all them done. So while I had the wheels off and stripping the tires, I uh, chucked some new wheel bearings in. Obviously got a new chain here, nice and gold, looking fresh. And then, yeah, you can't really see it, but new clutch cable in there. I've got the old one that's uh, still fine. Uh, so yeah, I got that one as a spare as well. As I said before, guys, preventative maintenance. That's all this stuff is. Most of the stuff on the bike was still working just fine, but when you're going on such a big trip and going to some remote places. It's definitely easier to just do all these fixes and changes in the shed now before you head out. Yeah, you wanna prevent any issues out on the tracks. The only real major issue that I had on the whole bike when it was apart, uh, obviously was the front forks. I think it was this side, uh, but on my latest trip to Fraser Island, I found a leak on that. So I wasn't sure how much oil I'd actually lost. So instead of me trying to just fix the seal up, I sent uh, both the front forks to a suspension shop here on the Gold Coast, uh, gave them a full service, new seals, new oil. So they should be all in tip top shape, uh, hopefully fingers crossed, no other dramas with those on this trip. And then lastly, a couple other things that I needed to replace. This Safari Tank fuel cap has a seal underneath it. There's a brand new one in there. I lost the other one on my Simpson Desert trip, so it's been missing for a long time. I've just been been uh, putting some duct tape around there to seal it up, but pretty sure I lost that other seal out at Udnadatta when I fueled the bike up. It must have just fell out and then after that point I was leaking fuel when the bike was fully topped up. So new seal in there. And then the second other thing I replaced was the number plate. The other one, well obviously don't have it, had to return it to Service New South Wales. The other one was cactus after the Fraser Island trip. It was hanging by threads. Brand new number plate on, all good.
Now in the way of parts and mods that I've added to the bike before this trip, we'll start off here at the front with this brand new headlight that I've chucked in. It was uh, $50 off eBay. It does plug into the original cabling in behind, but it doesn't come with any mounting kit. So I've had to make up my own kit. I just used some uh, bits of steel that I had laying around that uh, had come off the tail tidy off the MT-09, believe it or not. But I've whacked all that in there. Might have to do another video at a later date, just showing you guys how I've fitted in there. The thing is unreal, so much more bright than the standard candle that comes on the front of these things. The next thing I went and done was something I've wanted to do for a long, long time on this bike. I just kept putting it off for some reason, but I've finally done it and I'm glad I've done it. It's removing this side stand switch. So if you're unfamiliar with what the side stand switch does, a lot of bikes have these, but basically when your stand is in the down position, the bike registers that and it won't let you ride off with a stand down, it cuts the power. So finally got rid of that. It's been an issue on this bike. Obviously when I stand up, my heel sometimes hits this stand or if you hit a big bump, the stand drops a tiny bit and you lose power for a split second. Finally done that, which is great. Uh, and also while we're down here at the stand, I've added this uh, larger base plate to the stand. So hopefully that uh, helps with that issue when I'm on sand or any soft ground, help hold the bike up on the stand a little better. Now the last thing that I added on new to the bike before this trip is these OS dirt bike rings. Now I used to just have the OS base here just wrapped around the frame. It's worked fine and held up, but uh, I found it was a little bit uneven where one side would sit higher than the other. So got these here, uh, these rings just come on these velcro straps that just wrap around the frame one on either side and uh yeah it's really sort of evened up the way these bags sit so it should sit much nicer much more even pretty cheap and easy easy mod there to chuck on Now let's quickly talk about tyres. Everyone loves to talk about tyres. Everyone always asks what tyres I'm running, sizes, all that kind of stuff. Now I do still love my Motoz tyres. As you can see here, these are the ones that I pulled off. Uh, they went across the Simpson Desert and they've still got some life left in them so they'll be there waiting. But I've gone and tried something different. I'm going to try something different that everyone raves on about. So I'm keen to see how they go. I've got the Dunlop D606s. Got the 130 on the rear. And then we've got the front one up here as well. Pretty keen to try these things out. As I said, everyone raves about them and says how good they are. They were on sale, so I figured I'd grab them at a good price as well. So yeah, it'll be good to try something out different compared to the Motos. Yeah, see how they stack up. But Dunlop D606s, ready to go. I'll do a follow up on the tires when I get back from this trip. They'll obviously have around 5,000 Ks on them, so we'll see how they stack up. Now that's everything when it comes to the maintenance and extra bits and pieces that I've chucked on the bike for this big trip. Now it's time to take our attention over to these boxes here, which has all my uh, luggage and riding gear in it. Obviously I've already packed everything and it's ready to go, but just for you guys, I'm gonna get everything out. I'll spread it out on the floor here and I'll show you what I've packed for this trip. Just give me a sec, I'll get it all out and take a quick look. So here's all my luggage. It doesn't look like much when it's all packed in the bag still, but going with the trusty Krieger setup as always, these two bags here are the 18 liters, so they'll be on either side of the bike. And then this one over here, it's not fully packed yet, but that'll be just for clothing only. So I've got to chuck a few more bits and pieces in that. Got the backpack here, which will carry some snacks, a little bit of electronics, personal items, tank bag, which isn't full yet either. Got a new little solar battery charger thing on here, power bank. So that'll keep me batteries and phone as going at camp. Uh, there's nothing in it yet really. I've got to put all my camera gear in it, so that'll be dedicated to the drone GoPros. Fender toolkit, as always, uh, ready to go. And then I've got my little camp chair, but I'll get these bags out one at a time. I'll show you everything that is in them. So here's all the kit out of that first pannier. I'll start over here on the left. Obviously this stuff here over on the left is at the very bottom for a reason. I'm hoping that I don't have to touch any of it. But I've got two spare tubes, a rear and a front, and just the hand pump to pump them up should I need to. I've got a pre-oiled air filter here in a little plastic bag. So I'll probably change it out on the trip at some point. It'll get pretty dusty. This right here is just a waterproof cover for the tank bag. So if we get caught in the rain, I've got to cover that up for all my uh, camera kit. This right here is a portable battery pack, uh, jump starter as well. The cable's there, should either of us get a flat battery, that'll come in handy, but I can also use it to charge any phones and GoPros if I need a bit of extra power. Got one liter of oil here, hopefully we don't need this, but Lance has another liter as well, so if one of us does end up binning the bike in the water pretty badly, we do have two liters, so we'll be able to do a full oil change should we need to. Uh, obviously you can top up the bike, as the DRZs love to chew through the oil anyway. Here I've got my cooking kit that I always use. This is uh, pretty beat up, but 
does the job. There's two pans, inside there's the cooker, another gas canister, a lighter, but I've got a second canister as well. Here I've got towel, a little hiking towel that I always take. Now this big red bag, the Bell helmet bag, is actually full of food. So I've got a heap of hiking meals in here. I think there's about 13 or 14 of them in there. And then there's also about another 12 cliff bars protein bars as well. Stacked up with food in there. Obviously, I'm not gonna eat that on every meal. Uh, plan is to eat along the way where I can, but I'm loaded up with food there. Should I need it in a hurry? Just had to run out for a delivery from the postie. Very important valve caps <laughs> in gold. Chuck on the bike, I needed some new ones, so why not get gold to match the chain? But anyway, back into these bags. So here's bag number two. Really does not look like a lot of stuff, does it? But uh, start over here on the right. Just got a couple of extra straps there. Should I need to tie anything extra down, or if any of the other ones break. Here I've got the tent poles, tent pegs, and the actual tent just there. The Denali Zephyr one that I've had for a long time and uh, it just keeps performing for me so I don't need to buy a new one. This right here is a sleeping bag liner. Help me keep it clean plus it'll give me a little bit of extra warmth on the way back down south when things start getting a bit colder. Got my trusty old Cedar Summit pillow. Does well. Got the sleeping bag here. It's a Denali sleeping bag as well. 10 degree comfort rating. So it'll be just fine for way up north as we start getting closer to the Gold Coast uh, and out west. Will be a little bit colder, but I think I should be fine if I rug up. And then we've got the sleeping mat. It's a Cedar Summit Comfort Plus as well, which I've had for a long time also. But yeah, that sleeping arrangement works well for me. Sorted, that's bag number two. So that's my luggage setup in a nutshell. Don't really need to show you guys that bag. That'll just be full of clothes, uh, puffer jacket, jumper, all that kind of stuff, whatever I can fit in there, as well as my toiletries. Also, as I said, backpack has the water bladder, so I can hold almost four liters in that. Uh, I might carry an extra 600 mil bottle uh, just to use for cooking. Camera gear in the tank bag, fender bag for all the tools, and then my camping chair will go on top of the clothing bag up top. But that's the camping setup, all good. Gotta chuck it back in the bags and get it back in these boxes. But I'll give you guys a quick look at this box with uh, my riding gear in it. So this box here, all my riding gear. This on top here is a bit of an armor suit. Uh, it's the Alpine Stars Bionic Plus. First time I wore this was on my Fraser trip. Uh, yeah, really happy with it. It's pretty comfy, done the job. Great for the warmer weather riding. I'm not gonna pull all this out because it's really packed very neatly to fit in this box, but got the Tech 7s there, one and two. Got my Bell MX-9 Adventure helmet there with the setup ready for the GoPro. Got some new goggles in here, uh, new Fox goggles. It should go well with the helmet. That helmet allows me to run goggles at the same time and the visor still closes, so it's perfect. Just some gloves in there, uh, my pants and my riding shirt, MX clothes down there. And that is all that is in that box, but that's all I'll need for when I pick the bike up and all the gear chuck all that on and be able to ride the thing. Well, that's it guys, that wraps it up here with the Cape York trip prep for the bike and all the luggage that I'm taking with me as well. Time to get all this packed back up and in the boxes and uh, then it's just a waiting game, I guess. Wait for this truck to come, pick it all up and then I'll meet it up north in a couple of weeks, ready to get this epic adventure underway. So hopefully you guys got something out of that. Hopefully it'll help you if you're packing for your own Cape trip or any other big adventure you might have. Give you a few tips there. But thanks as always for watching guys. I really, really appreciate it. Stomp on that like button like it's a rear brake and you've come in too hot to a corner if you did enjoy this one and also consider subscribing if you want to see how my luggage setup and the bike performs on this massive cape trip again a big thanks as always remember guys got some merch here if you want to support the channel jump over into the website i'll link it down below feel free to grab something if you like and uh support the channel but yeah as always thanks so much for watching safe riding guys see you soon